الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I was not told today about the topic, which topic you guys want me to talk about. So I thought about uh, making more profit when it comes to reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those regular gathering, especially when you offer the food during those gathering. There is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, unfortunately become ignored in most of the Islamic countries. And sometimes also we are here do not know the importance of this sunnah. So I'd like to talk about it today. Hopefully we'll make some difference by the end of our talk today. Uh, this is the Sunnah of Atiqa. We hear this word a lot when somebody gives birth to a child, they make what's so called Atiqa. But we do not know the details, the meaning, the importance of this Atiqa. So today we'll be talking about it because in many of the Islamic societies, uh, due to poverty and uh, lack of knowledge, they ignore these sunnas, and it is very important to be practiced. We will shed some light about that today, and hopefully, inshallah, we will benefit from that. The word aqiqa in itself has a confused meaning. There is a root for that word, which is aqqa. Aqqa means qata. Cut. And it's only related to cutting the relationship or the kindness with parents. Only cutting the generosity and the love to the parents called Aqqa or Aquq al Walidin. When it comes to cutting relations with relatives, it does not call the aq, called qata, which is less severe than the word aqqa. The verb aqqa means you are cutting a relationship with your own parents. And it is one of the worst sins. And the opposite of aquq called birr. We have aquq walidin, birr walidin. We have qata arham, salat arham. So, aqqa is a severe cut that you do between you and your father and mother. And in order for you to fix that, you have to cure it with birr. And birr is the kindness that have the love and the compassionate within. Cutting relationship with arham, with kinship. We say cut, not aqqa. It's less severe, less harming. When you are bad to your father, different than you are bad to your uncle. When you are bad to your mother, is different than being bad to your aunt. It's less severe. So that's why with your parents called aq, uquq, with your relative called cut, which is less severe. It's bad too. And the cure for uquq is bir. And the cure for qata is salat. Aqiqa came from cutting the throat of that animal that you offer as a sacrifice. Called the cutting. That's what it means. Cutting what? You can explain. Cutting the animal as a sacrifice for the sake of Allah, as an appreciation for having a child. That's aqib. When and where this sunnah 
was originated. This is started with Prophet Ismail alayhi salam when his father Prophet Ibrahim have seen in his vision and the vision of the prophets are wahi. In inspiration, it's order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is slaughtering or killing or offering his son as a sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that to him was not like a bad dream or a good dream or maybe or maybe not. This is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before I move, if you ever see one of those dreams that you are killing your son, do not do that. Because you are different than the prophets. The ru'a or the vision of the prophets are wahiyya, inspiration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no joke about it. But if you ever see that you're killing your wife, or killing your son, killing your, don't do that, okay? So it become in the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do that aqiqah twice. A general one which is the udhiyya in the anniversary or the day at which that originated with the time of Prophet Ibrahim which is in day of Eid al-Adha and a special one whenever Allah gives you a child. So we have a general one in Eid al-Adha for every able have to do that. But the general one, yes it is a sunnah. And it is a sunnah mu'akkada for those who are able. But the aqiqah for your own child which is the private one, the special one, is more of a short sunnah than that sunnah. It's a specific sunnah. Now, yes, sir. اليوم سنتحدث عن العقيد. طبعا السبب إنه ما حدش نوبري يعني ما حدش قال لي أتكلم عليه. وفي كل مرة بنيجي في أكل. فإن شاء الله عاوز إن إحنا نحول الأكل ده بجانب إنه سنة وخير لكل من أتى بالطعام وكل من أكل الطعام وشارك الطعام. ممكن يتحول إلى يعني استثمار في الدين قوي جدا لو حولناها إلى عقيقة فالنهاردة نتكلم عن العقيقة وكلمة عقيقة في حد ذاتها كلمة لها معنى غريب شوية زي كلمة المسجد الحرام أو الشهر الحرام كلمة حرام لها معاني كتير فيها معنى الحرمة وفيها معنى القدسية وفيها معاني كتير كلمة عقيقة معنى معناها القطع والفعل الأصلي يعني الجذر اللي هو لكلمة عقيقة عقة وتأتي في عقوق الوالدين مثلا عقة والدين يعني قطع علاقته أو بره بوالدين ويأتي عقوق الوالدين كالذبح يعني كلمة هو أقصى أنواع القطع لذلك لا يسمى عصيان أو إيذاء أي إنسان غير الوالدين بكلمة عقوق هي خاصة بالوالدين عقوق الوالدين قطع الأرحام يعني ما يجي والدين نقول هذا عاق لوالدين وهذا قاطع لرحمة كلمة عاق يعني قاطع وكلمة قاطع الرحم يعني قاطع ولكن عقوق الوالدين لما فيها من أي يعني حرمة وقدسية وشدة وعنف إنك تكون قاسي على والديك تكون بمثابة الذبح كأنك ذبحت شيء والعقوق عكس البر ولك عقوق الوالدين عكسها بر الوالدين قطع الأرحام عكسها صلة الأرحام هذه صفة وتصف نعم That's exactly what I said in English I will continue إن شاء الله أوكي ف هذا يعني انا ببدا بمعنى الكلمه اللي هي العقيقه والعق والقطع وكده فكلمه عقيقه جاءت من قطع هذا الحيوان من اجل ان يضحى به في هذه السنه التي تسمى العقيقه السنه دي بدات بسيدنا ابراهيم عليه السلام لما راى في المنام انه يذبح ابنه فربنا سبحانه وتعالى ارسل اليه جبريل بكبش من الجنه حتى يفدي به هذا الولد فأصبحت في سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
أن يجعل هذا الفداء فداء عام وهو في عيد الأضحى وفداء خاص عندما يرزق الواحد منا بطفل. طبعا للولد حاجة وللبنت حاجة تانية بعدين بنفسرها إن شاء الله. فهكذا بدأت العقيدة. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول في الحديث: كل مولود أو كل مولود رهين بعقيقته. رهن. لا يفك رهنه إلا إذا حصل له عقيقة. فهذا شيء مهم جدا. وللأسف الشديد في كثير من البلاد الإسلامية أهملوا هذه السنة. نتيجة الفقر أو عدم المقدرة أو البعد عن الدين أو أو أو. إهمال السنة شيء وإحداث بديل السنة هو عين البدعة، هو البدعة اللي ما فيش فيها كلام. فمثلا في مصر بلدنا مكان العقيقة عملوا حاجة ما يسمى بالسبوع. فإهمال السنة شيء وإحداث بديل السنة هو البدعة الحقيقية. فللأسف الشديد في مصر إحنا دلوقتي بنعمل بدعة اسمها السبوع وهي دي اللي استبدلت بسنة العقيدة. هنتكلم إن شاء so, العقيقة as we said originated by Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام revived as a sunnah by Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وقلنا general عقيقة which is the Udhiyya in the day of Eid al-Adha and a special one when Allah سبحانه وتعالى give you a child. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, uh, told us about the Udhiyya and the عقيقة both the quality of the animal is the same. The animal has to reach almost a year, which is preferably to be a ram. And if you have a choice, can be white. And if you have more choices, that the face and the legs can be black. If you have choice, if there is no choice, just any healthy, good animal. From the Sunnah of Aqiqa, it is a Sunnah that the family, the relatives and the friend and the poor people all eat from that aqib. Some of the ulama said you have to divide it third, third, third. And I disagree with that. Because sometimes you do not find the combination of the three thirds. Sometimes you are somewhere that you have no family. You're a single man living here. It's not fair that you eat one third of that dhabiha and the other people eat the two thirds. Sometimes you are somewhere you have no relatives, no friends. But the sunnah, which I consider, is to let the family, the friends, the poor and needy, everyone eats from that aqib. Everyone. If you are a vegetarian and you do not eat meat, you can give it all. You don't have to eat. It's a sunnah to eat if you can eat. If you do not know any poor people around, it's only your friends and neighbors and stuff, that's okay. As long as you look, you try to do your efforts of getting the family, the friends, and the poor, everybody eats from that, that will be the right way of doing it. So we have to get the healthy animal. We have to get everybody to eat from that. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he made aqiqa for Al-Hasan and Al-Hussein, his grand grandchildren, he made it with two for the male and one for the female. So, do we have to do two when it's a male? The minimum is one. But if you are able, you can do two when there is a male and one for the female. Why? Allah knows. But you can conclude that when you have a boy and a girl, the boy inherits twice of the girl. So let me spend twice of the girl. That's one way you can look at it. The other way is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even in his udhiyah, in the day of Eid al-Adha, the general udhiyah, when you and me offer him one, he used to offer two. Why does he offer two? He used to make a niyah for one. This is for Muhammad and his household. 
and this is for the the nation of Muhammad whoever did not sacrifice that will suffice for them so it's to make one for the nation and one for his family so his sinna was making two but the minimum is one you can make one for the male one for the female but if you are able and you want to do the sunnah of the sunnah, you can make two for the male and one for the female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one time I was invited for atiqah and I spoke in for a few moments. And I talk about being appreciative. It is an appreciation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a child and you want to give a sheep to Allah. But when I say a child, I said the best child ever. The best child in the world. So the father of that child at the end, he came to me and whispered, he said, you exaggerated a little bit. That child doesn't even look that good. How can you say the best child in the world? Then I tell him, if we offer you to trade your bad looking child with the best looking child in the world, which one you will take? He said, my child. I told him, your child is better than the best child in the world. So this is mean that we are appreciating the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is so generous. Allah is so generous. Even though you are paying back something to Allah, Allah does not take it for free. Allah give you a reward for the hair of that animal, for the blood of that animal, for the food of that animal. Allah give you a reward for the dua. Allah give you a reward for getting the people together, for connecting everybody together. And above all, some people come at the day of Eid al-Adha or the time for the Aqiq and they say, brother, uh, why don't we pay money instead of getting the Aqiq? Can we do that? Yes and no. If everybody paid money, will be no Aqiq, will be no Uthiyah. We are killing a Sunnah. And the sunnah of Uthiyah and the sunnah of Aqiqah is serving another purpose besides giving the food. It's enhancing the relationship between the society. It's making the poor sitting next to the rich. At the old days, the rich people used to eat certain quality of food and the poor people used to eat different quality of food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the poor to eat from the good quality of the meat that the rich is doing. When you get these people together, you are performing a good relationship for the community. You're getting everybody together, you are receiving a dua, and you are reviving a sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. fil Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. لما عق عن الحسن والحسين هم أولاد بنته فاطمة رضي الله عنها وأرضاها كان عق عن الطفل الولد بكبشين فأصبحت في سنته أن الولد يعق باثنين والبنت بواحد ففي ناس بتتساءل يعني ليه اثنين وليه واحد فممكن نقول إنه الولد برضه لما أبوه بيموت بيرث ضعف أخته خليه ينفق ضعف أخته هذه واحدة الثانية إنه الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام لما عق بكبشين أملحين عن حفيده كذلك كان يفعل في عيد الأضحى وكان يقول في نية هذه الأضحية هذا عن محمد وأهل بيته وهذا عن من لم يضحي من أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فكان بيعمل عن الأمة فالحد الأدنى أن يكون فيه على الأقل خروف أو جدي أو عجي أو جمل أو whatever يعني اللي تقدر عليه الحد الأدنى خروف أو جدي هي دي اللي في السنة طيب الفقير المعدوم يعمل إيه الفقير المعدوم في حصل في يوم عيد الأضحى على عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان سيدنا بلال فقير فضحى بديك ديك فضحك الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال 
ضحى مؤذن بمؤذن ضحى مؤذن بمؤذن فهذه تدل على اليسر في الدين إذا كان واحد غير قادر المهم النية ونيجي في يوم العقيقة بدل ما يسمى بالسبوع اللي حاصل للأسف الشديد في مصر ربما يكون بدأت المشكلة دي في عدم قدرة الأهل على أنهم يجيبوا خروف ويذبحوه فعملوها أي حاجة كده وخلاص تأدي الغرض ولكن لأن العقيقة سنة إذا استبدلت بغير السنة فهي بدعة صريحة مفيش فيها كلام مفيش فيها طيب كتير منا ما ضحوش يا جماعة كتير منا من الكبار ما ضحوش ما ضحوش في العقيقة وكتير من أبنائنا لم يعق عنهم فهم مرهونين فلا بد من حل الرهن ده سنة العقيقة إنه في يوم السابع يذبح عن الولد كبشين إذا كان أو واحد ويحلق شعره وبوزن الشعر يوزن الشعر ويخرج قيمته ذهب يعني إذا طلع جرام أو جرامين نشوف قيمة جرام الذهب كام أو الجرامين ويخرج صدقة في سبيل الله ويؤذن في أذنه اليمنى وتقام الصلاة في الأذن اليسرى وهذه هي العقيقة ويسمى أو يؤكد الاسم إذا كان قد سمي طب اللي ما عملش الرسول قال لك اللي يعني اللي يفوت السابع يبقى سابع السابع أو سابع السابع وهكذا وإذا لم تعرف اليوم فأي يوم يجزئ وفي أي سن يعني ممكن واحدة تضحي أو تعمل عقيقة عن زوجها واحد يعمل عقيقة عن مراته عن ابن فلان وابن فلان وابن فلان والهدف اللي أنا عاوز أوصل له في النهاية لو كل الجالية اللي إحنا فيها دي كل واحد أحصى عياله وهو وزوجته اللي ما عملوش عقيقة ويجوا يرتبوا مع المسجد اليوم ده أنا هجيب اللحم وأنتوا عليكم الباقي واللحم ده بسنة أو بنية العقيقة عن زوجي أو عن أمي أو عن أبي أو عن بنتي أو عن أخي ولو عملنا كده صدقوني هيكون في كل يوم في كل يوم سبت في كل أسبوع في عقيقة في بركة في طفل بيعتق ها في يعني حسنات لا حصر لها ولا عدة في ناس هتجتمع في ناس هتدعي في سنة هتحيا ربنا هيبارك فيكم وهيبارك في هذا المسجد وده هدفي من درس النهار. So the sunnah of aqiqa as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated that in the seventh day of birth you slaughter a sheep. The most common animal for that is the sheep or a goat. But what if you didn't have a sheep or a goat? You didn't have money. You're a very poor man. It happened at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bilal alayhi salam. You know, he used to be the mu'adhan of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the day of Eid al-Adha, he doesn't have money to get a goat or a sheep. So he had a rooster. So he slaughtered that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that a mu'adhan offer a sacrifice of another mu'adhan. Because the rooster called that then at the fetch. This is to give you also the indication that the if you cannot afford the sheep or the goat, anything with the niyyah of Atika, even if it was a chicken, inshaAllah, Allah will accept. We know that many of us did not do Atika, especially the old generation. Or the people who came from foreign countries, while well, poverty is very common. If you know that no one performed aqiqah on your behalf, or your wives, or any of your children, try to plan to do that. Every week make aqiqah for one of the children, or one of the family members. You can arrange that with a masjid, like this masjid. And the idea came to me because there is a food. And not every masjid will go to, there is a food. So it seems to be people here are very generous so we can get more benefit of that food by 
one of the brothers or the sister will say, okay, next week we'll arrange with the management of the masjid. We are bringing a meat for Atika. And you guys bring the rest, the rice, the salad, the bread, whatever. And we will do Atika for my son, or my daughter, or my wife, or my mom, or my dad. And if we have a list for all the members who want to do that, inshallah, through the whole year, you will have enough. The whole year, how many weeks? 50? 52? 50 weeks. I know we have more than 50 people even here, including children, boys and girls, did not perform aqiqah yet. And the child without giving the aqiqah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that the newborn is held captive until his aqiqah released him. This is such a great hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a child like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam his son Ismail and he tested him by taking Ismail from him then he gave him back and they offered that sacrifice and that was a ram from the paradise and it became an our sin to appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you if you do the aqiqah for yourself you appreciate it the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, the energy that makes you walk, the eyes that you can see with, the ears, the hearing, the feeling, all of this. So you are doing the aqiqah as an appreciation for the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you give something in return as an appreciation, normally you didn't get anything again for return, but Allah is so generous, even though you are given a sheep for a child, Allah will give you again the price for that sheep, Many, many, multiple times. It's not like, okay, I gave you, you've given me, or even. No, Allah doesn't, doesn't read you this way. One time I was speaking in, a, in that aqiqah when I mentioned that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the best child in the world. Because none of us will trade his child for anyone else. So I don't care how ugly he looks. He is the best to you. So to appreciate that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you such a great reward and it shows that you are imitating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the most beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ash-Shakur. The most thankful, the most grateful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the least you do to Him, Allah appreciates that. And Allah wants to teach you the manners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is so kind, He wants you to be kind. The kindness is one of the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about kindness. He said, Al-Kareem, Qareebun min Allah, Qareebun min al-Nas, Qareebun min al-Jannah, Ba'eedun min al-Nar. Wal-Bakheel, Ba'eedun min Allah, Ba'eedun min al-Nas, Ba'eedun min al-Jannah, the generous one is close to Allah, close to the people, close to the Jannah, far away from the hellfire. And the stingy one is far away from Allah, far away from people, far away from Jannah, very close to the hellfire. So with whom you want to be? So we need to learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we need to adopt the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the attributes of the beauty of Allah such as the mercy, the kindness, the giving and all of this. So inshallah, if we plan, and unfortunately we don't have too many people to hear what we're saying today, but if we plan this aqeeqah, to release our children and ourselves and arrange for that and every week one of the members will do aqiqah for him or one of his family members inshallah will be a good practice and we can benefit a lot from it and I let you brothers uh, go ahead and uh, ask some questions I know there are some concerns about that and any other questions in any area of the religion I hope inshallah I'll be able to answer yes Barakallah. Sometimes you can't think 
part of the profile of ground beef, of meat, chicken, and we should say that this is a No, no. You have Aqiqa mean you have to cut something. You have to slaughter something. You have to shed blood. You have to shed blood. Okay? And like I say, we can do it with the least cost possible. The one who's offering the sheep, he can only offer that. And the rest of the brothers can bring the other stuff. The rice, the meat, I mean the, uh, the bread, the salad, all other stuff. Yes. If you do it where? Overseas. You could. You could. You could while people overseas in some poor countries are in much dire need for the meat and all of this stuff than here. But having it here, it will serve as a purpose of getting the community together. It's a developing a relationship, enhancing the love and the compassion between the community, getting the poor to sit next to the rich. And instead of being jealous and, and envy of that rich, he will make a dua for him, all of this. So we need to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ah, the question, the question. The Akh is asking, he says, there are people who do the truth as a form of, you know, give a little hot dog, a little chicken, a little lamb, and make a barbecue, and make a barbecue. So we said that the truth has the truth, the truth, the truth, and the blood. So it has to be from the blood. It's possible that the truth has the truth, if there was a community or a community, يعني جالية زي اللي احنا فيها فيها الفقير وفيها الصديق وفيها اهل البيت لان العقيقة لازم لحم العقيقة ولحم الاضحية يوزع على اهل البيت يأكلون منه على الاقارب والاصدقاء وايضا للفقراء وحبذا لو يعطى الفقراء القسم الاكبر بعض الناس لما بيتكلموا على الثلث وثلث وثلث فهذا التثليث مش شرط يكون بالضبط ولكن الثلاث انواع يأكلوا من هذه العقيقة. نعم. هل يستطيع الإنسان أن يعقع نفسه؟ نعم. نعم. Can someone offer عقيقة for his own self? Yes. If you know that your family did not do it for you, or you are not sure, and you are old enough, you are independent, you can offer عقيقة for your own self, and that, believe me, that will bring lots of barakah in your life. Definitely. هل يستطيع الإنسان أن يعوق عن نفسه؟ نعم يستطيع أن يعوق عن نفسه. نعم. تفضل. يعني كلمة رهينة كأن الواحد اشترى حاجة وما دفعش ثمنها. لانه اشترى حاجة ولسه ما دفعش مجرد ما تدفع الثمن تحس كده ان اللي عطيلك الحاجة دي خلاص ارتاح وعرف خصوصا اذا كنت قادر هذا معنى الرهن ودايما الرهن بتكون انت راهن الغالي جدا على شيء بسيط قوي فربنا سبحانه وتعالى اعطاك طفل غالي قوي ها وفك الرهن ده خروف يعني تخيل الفرق بين الطفل اللي ممكن لو انت تملك عشرين مليون تدفعهم بس في عملية جراحية وما يهمكش مقابل خروف فدايما الرهن بيبقى المرهون اغلى كتير من قيمة الرهن فنفك الرهن ان شاء الله نعم yes uh, the sister ask can you explain what you mean captive when we say that uh, every child is captive until his aqiqa is done I said just like when you buy something and you did not pay for it. You buy something, you promise to pay, but you did not pay yet. The minute you make the payment and you free yourself from that debt, you feel very comfortable, you feel lots of blessings. Especially that debt, what you owe is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah give you the most valuable thing. Huh? Again, it's a small thing. Normally, when you take something, as a, as a rahan or a collateral for some for some money, you always put something too expensive because you borrowed so small amount of money. 
When the bank want to give you money against your home, they always give you a lot less than what the house worth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a child. The most beautiful thing in your life. And he want just in return to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving some meat to help yourself and others. It's not even going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not eat the meat, Allah does not benefit from the blood, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates your taqwa and your fairness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what is the meaning of 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 the meaning أن يكون الختان مع العقيقة في يوم السابع يعني الناس يختصروا الموضوع في حاجتين يعني يكون ختان ويكون عقيقة في اليوم السابع ويحلق الشعر احنا قلنا هذا الكلام انه الطفل in the, uh, in the seventh day of birth in the seventh day of birth uh, you have to offer the عقيقة you have to offer the animal to be sacrificed and you have to cut the hair and weigh the hair and the weight of gold, the price of that, you pay for the sake of Allah, you call that that in the right ear, and the uh, iqama in the left ear, and you make a dua. It's very common that the circumcision also happen in the seventh day, but the circumcision is something, and aqiqah is something else. And there is no aqiqah for the circumcision, but you can combine both, and it is actually recommended in Islam. Barakallah. Yes? Thank you. I'm a revert, a convert, and all my children were born before Islam. Yes. So how would, is that still required for me, or and, and if, how would I handle that if I have a lot of children to, to be able to... Like I say, if you are not able, you are exempt. But do your best, okay. to the best you can. And always have a certainty that Allah can give you. And have that intention. Oh Allah, if you give me, I will make a Whenever you give me next month, I will make aqiqah for one of my kids. You don't have to do it all at once. You can make one every year. But have the intention in you. If you die without performing what you intend to do, Allah will give you a reward as if you have done it. So keep the intention. So, السؤال, الاخ بيسألني بيقول لي ما هي حكم العقيقه مع الطهور اللي هو السيركمسيشن. فقلنا انه ما فيش عقيقة للطهور هو يجمع الطهور مع العقيقة يعني هذا يفضل إذا أمكن في اليوم السابع. Uh, the question here that, uh, that her parents her parents are not Muslims. Can I do عقيقة for them? I leave that optional. If you want to do it, fine. If not, it's not required. He yes, said, if your parents are not Muslims, and you converted to Islam, should I still do an aqiqah for myself? Yes, you can. Yes. If the man or the father does not do the aqiqah for his, or doesn't do the aqiqah for his children, can the mother do? Definitely she can. بيسأل السؤال لو لو الوالد أو الأب ما عملش العقيقه ممكن الأم تعملها؟ طبعا. وسؤال آخر بقول لك لو الـ الـ الوالدين غير مسلمين وأنت مسلم ولم يعقوا عنك ممكن تعق أنت عن نفسك نعم يجوز إن شاء الله أو بالمعنى الأصح مطلوب إذا أمكن يس Yes, yes. I believe with the, you know, you can correct me, with the Subur, the Egyptian do. Yes. I make a circle around the baby uh -huh. and use a... Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is a pharaoh's kind of... I didn't, I didn't get uh, uh, details of this, but uh, uh, the Sunnah, and there is a lot of talks about the Sunnah and the Bid'ah. And in many cases, even the ulama themselves cannot distinguish between is this Sunnah or Bid'ah. Okay, so there is lots of talks about Sunnah and Bid'ah. But the most obvious thing, when there is a Sunnah replaced by something other than Sunnah, that's a Bid'ah with no doubt. No one can argue that. It happens that unfortunately in Egypt, 
they do what so called subur the week or the seventh day of the birth of the baby they do other rituals than aqiqa and it's become very common and uh, good muslims invite each other uh, come for the subur of my child this is confirmed bid'ah because instead of that there was something called aqiqa and it's not done so we need inshallah to correct it if you do both no no what don't because if there is a sunnah confirm if that place was open do whatever let's say if there, if, if there was no aqiq and you want to do uh, what, what so called subur that's fine but since there was aqiq in that seventh day and someone intentionally or not removed that and put something else that's confirmed bid'ah let me give you, let me answer your question differently. There is no Eid uh, al-Milad, uh, uh, the date of birth, or the, uh, the what they call it, birthday. There is nothing called in Islam about it. If it happened, that may be okay. It's not as bad as the subur for the birth because there was in the of subur something called Aqiqa done by Prophet. But there is nothing about the birthday. So a lot of argument about that. Can we do it, cannot do it? That is a minor thing. But because there was something, and you remove that and put something else, that's how. Okay? Yeah. It's obvious. Okay. Yes. Now. Ladies first. Tfadl. Alaykum salam. Now. Sualim tfadl. يجوز بشرط طبعا الـ 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 الخروف في في الاضحيه يعني يجزئ عن اسره والبقره او العجل عن خمسه فممكن نعمل عجل بنيه اضحيه وعقيقه يجوز ان شاء الله اوكي يس اي طبعا ممكن اي شيء مادي لأن الوالدين لما بيتوفوا وبيتركوا أموال العيال بتورثها فالذي يرث المال يرث الدين ودين الله أحق أن يرضى صح؟ So the question is can at the day of عيد الأضحى I bring a bigger animal not a sheep probably a cow and I do عقيقة and أضحية with both the answer is yes إن شاء الله because the sheep is enough for one family. The cow is enough for five. So five families at the day of Eid al-Adha can share a price of a sheep, or a, I mean a cow, or a, a calf, and slaughter it for the five families. So if one family bring a cow and say with the intention of Atiqa and Udhiyah as well, it work inshallah. The other question was, she said, if my parents died already, can I do aqiqah for them? The answer is yes. If your parents leave money, you inherit the money. And if they leave that, you have to pay it. And the debt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be paid first. That's not a good thing. بس الثقه الجاريه ابتدت قبل ما يقوم لا 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 اذا مات العبد انقطع عمله الا من ثلاث ولد صالح يدعو له هذا الولد ممكن يكون ولد اخ اخت اي حد له فضل عليه صدقه جاريه انا اجي مثلا من مالي لما واحد راح لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم واشتكى ابوه فالرسول قال للابن انت ومالك لابيك فانت ومالك لابوك اللي مات ممكن عاوز تطلع منه 10000 دولار تحطهم صدقه جاريه بنيه الاجر لوالدك يجوز ان شاء الله او علم ينتفع به لو ابوك دخلك المدرسه وانت اصبحت طبيب او مهندس او مدرس وبتعلم الناس وكان له فضل عليك فانه دخلك المدرسه ينتفع من هذا العلم ان شاء الله اوكي ترجمها يس 
Okay. Uh, uh, the uh, the brother objected when we say yes. If your parents died, uh, you could do the aqiqa for them. Uh, saying that the sadaqa, the sadaqa jariyah, it should be done before the death of the deceased, which is not true. If someone died, a relative of yours or a friend of yours or someone you love. You make a dua for him, that dua will help. You give a sadaqa jariya. The sadaqa are two kind. Sadaqa that's consumed and sadaqa that's invested. We can do consumption and investment. The consumption sadaqa is just like a dinner in the masjid. We eat it and consume it. A sadaqa jariya, building something, sharing a masjid, sharing a graveyard, uh, helping someone, that will be investment and produces reward. So if you do that even after the death of your mother or father, and you establish that project on their behalf, they will benefit from it, inshallah. Now, Mr. The first question is, let's say that you don't know if your parents, they have lived, they are beautiful for you or not, they have passed away. What, in this case, what can you do? What shall we do? Wallahi, if, That's if, number one. Yes. The second comment is, you said that the ulama, they don't know if it is the, about the seven days, the seven, 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 you said that, yeah. you, said, you said that they don't know if it's a sunnah or a bit. No, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean that. If I said that, so I'm mistaken, but I didn't mean it this way. Uh, the first one, he said, if I didn't know whether my parents did aqiqah for me or not, uh, if you want to just to get the benefit of the doubt and do it, if they did it once and you do it again, you get the reward twice. Simple. Simple. Yeah. And if you're most feeling that they did it because it was very common in the family and you're almost sure they did it but you are not 100% sure that's still out here. You can rely on that. How about the sun passed away? Yes, 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 definitely. If someone have more than a child and doesn't have enough money or cannot afford getting a sheep for each, can one suffice for two? I could say yes. But what you can do, you can start one for real and the other one intention. And believe me, Allah will make it easy on you. We'll say, okay, I have two children, one is five years old and one is three years old. Now, my intention, oh Allah, and you know my heart, that I will do for both, but now I can afford only one. I'll start with the older one, who is five years old, and oh Allah, you're my witness, it's in my heart, I will do it as soon as I'm able. You are okay. Will be done until you're able and not doing it. If you do not do it while you're able, you'll be blamed for it. You can do it either way, inshallah. You can do one with the intention of both, and keep an intention. If you become able, you do another one for both, and half and half will be one, inshallah. And Allah is very easy, and Allah is very kind, and very merciful. And when Allah sees your heart that you're trying, Allah will accept anything, as long as you have the sincerity, inshallah. But if you have the ability to do it, to do two and you only do one, I think this is not a good practice because whatever you give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give you back much more than what you afford to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.